Celebrate the life and times of civil rights activist Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose birthday was yesterday. I'm joined now by the president-elect of the San Diego Rotary Club, Mr. Michael Brunker, formerly the head honcho of the Jackie Robinson YMCA, which always took this day. This was a major day on the YMCA calendar, was it not? No doubt, because for the 24, 23 years that I was with the Y, we would always kick off the holiday with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Human Dignity Award breakfast that began in the gymnasium of the Jackie Robinson Family YMCA as soon as the holiday became official. And we ran that now for 23 years. It's now in its 38th year overall. So we had a great event on. Uh, I, I keep saying we. I'm not there. I'm, I'm gone yeah, two years. I, I think you're allowed. <laughs> you're allowed to yes. say we because you're yes. you are on that Mount Rushmore of that YMCA. Amen. Could you? Uh, are we, as, a, as a society, as a city, are we doing a good enough job celebrating the life and times of Dr. King, in your I, view? I think we're doing a great job of celebrating it, and, and you can see just by what KUSI does. And, and I'm going to tell you right now that piece that Dave uh, Scott put together, you need to make that mandatory viewing for every child in San Diego County. So I would get that link and spread it out throughout the entire school system here in San Diego so that they can get a sense for what King was all about. We celebrate king we celebrate the weekend we celebrate the holiday but my question is are we doing enough to sustain it throughout the year answer why that question yes why can't every day be a king well, day? fair enough but I, yeah. I answer that question would dr king if I, I ask it in every interview and i apologize for being repetitive but if dr king had a third chair here what would he be saying would he be happy at the legacy would he be say, we're, we're coming up short or we're, uh, we're exceeding his expectations uh two weeks before his 28th birthday January 1st, 1957, he addressed the NAACP rally, and he talked about the challenge of the new age. But what he said there was the need to develop leadership, and leaders that are going to be strong, leaders that will be stay able to stand up, not be egocentric, to be able to do the right thing at all times. And I think that would have been his mantra. Now, are we doing that today? Certainly. We're seeing great examples of leaders emerging and coming up, but I don't think we're seeing enough of that happening consistently. Because when you look at leadership at every level, there's a void, in my opinion, and we need to do more. So make the Brunker Amendment. What would you change? If it were up to me, I would make sure that everybody that's listening will take time today to really investigate what King was all about. I heard you say earlier, you just marveled at how he could get up and speak without notes, without a script, without a teleprompter, and how he would ad address. We talk so much about the I Have a Dream speech, the mountaintop speech. There were a lot more speeches oh, that were out there, but you, I mean, it was, ex it was in his heart. He spoke with passion, and I think all of us need to really take time to study the man and to study his works, and not just put it on a shelf for one day and then leave it until next year. Let's do something that's going to make an impact. I always feel a little, uh, I don't know, guilty when I bring that part of it up, because his, his life and times is about the civil rights movement, and I understand that. I, I don't want to belittle that in any way, but his ability to connect with I mean, uh, listen, if you're in the communications business and you want to be able to be a public speaker, you know, he, how could you speak to that many people and have everybody doing this, yeah. le leaning forward? To me, that is a gift. Uh, you know, that's how many people can you say that about? Well, you introduced me earlier as the incoming president of the San Diego Rotary Club, which is an honor I'm excited about. I begin on July 1st. But Rotary has a four-way test, and here's what it says. Number one, is it the truth? Number two, is it fair to all concerned? Number three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And number four, is it beneficial to all concerned? Now, this is not about me evaluating you. It's about what I say, think, and do with my head, my heart, my hands, and my habits every day. King embodied that spirit. He was bigger than civil rights. I mean, he talked about, it wasn't just about black people. He talked about all people. He didn't talk about be the best Negro doctor, the best Negro lawyer, the best Negro teacher. He said, be the best teacher. And that applies to everybody. And I think those messages can resound with all. So maybe are we, as, as we politically, are we maybe getting away from that a little bit where we're, we're using racial identity politics sometimes? Do you think Dr. King would have a problem with that? He crossed all, all barriers. I mean, he spoke on both sides. He, could, he talked to presidents. He talked to business. He did all of that. And so 
color wasn't there for him. It was about the movement that would make an impact and do the right thing. So when you talk about the rotary four-way test, he would have been a great Rotarian. You know? <laughs> yeah, I mean, seriously, you know, when, when you talk about is it the truth, when you look at all the things he did, is it the truth? When there's an incident that comes up today, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? What are we doing every day to build goodwill and better friendships? And is it beneficial for all concerned? If we all did that, if we all took time to do that, if we took time today to study King, study his, his speeches, study his oratories, just study the videos. You, you, can, you go on YouTube today and you can pull up every speech he ever did, but share that with your children, you know, right. with your grandchildren. Don't just make this a day on or a day off. Make it a lifetime committed to the movement and truly be an ally to what this is all about. And I would be remiss if I didn't also identify you as a great photographer. I <laughs> saw your work f following Lincoln's football state run, and now I'm yes. seeing you're out there doing the wildlife shots. So anybody yes. who doesn't follow you on Facebook should because... You, you're pretty good with the camera well, in your hands. Well, I think that, that that's important, but I think too, and, and if I can close on this too, is a lot have been said, but in, you know, eight months before he was assassinated, I lived through what was considered one of the worst riots in the history of this country in, J in Detroit in July of 1967. And, and I know as, as we look at those times and we look at the things that lead up to that, I'll never forget, I was 15 years old, I was in 10th grade, and we had a school assembly. And at the school assembly, a young black man came into the assembly and he talked about King, he talked about his nonviolent movement. He gave this quote, he says, we have before us a glorious opportunity to inject a new dimension of love into the veins of our civilization. And the end is reconciliation, the end is redemption, the end is the creation of the beloved community. If we can all do that today, we will truly have a better world. Michael Brunker, everybody.